scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Be careful when you talk about people, especially aspects of their lives that are not favorable. Brothers and sisters, Jesus had resurrected. They were still talking about his death. There are people you may see today. Yes, the guy was a smoker when you knew him. You've not known him for five years. And this brother has received. Do you know, I used to have a classmate years ago. That guy, I got to hear that he got into all kinds of funny things. His father was a pastor. And this brother got into, I mean, this just all this smoking, these funny things. I wondered where he got that thing from. You looked at this guy, his eyes were dark, his mouth, you know, cracks, all scattered life. As if he never went to school. I remember one day seeing the guy and he said he wanted to learn guitar, he was crying. I told him, I said, my friend, the truth is that you're messing up your life, but God can give you a chance. And he said, everybody has turned him down. I said, don't worry. Do you know, four years ago, I found out he was a pastor in Salem Chapel. Yes yes fiery pastor ah when he called me i said ah he was i said you mean it salem chapel archbishop sam amaga salem chapel you've become a man of god now he said yes i was talking and then we were discussing i was so happy i mean two minutes went to five minutes and he blasted in tongues i said this guy is filled with the holy ghost i mean this is this is not tongues that started today no, there is tongues. This thing has graduation. It has levels. Ah, ah. His brother was, was ratting this thing. And I just looked at him. I said, that's right. Brothers and sisters, imagine the person who advised that nobody should help him. That person will bury his head in shame forever. Most of our parents are old. There is no helper because they advise people not to help their helpers. They said, this boy will be useless forever. This lady is a prostitute forever. While they were talking, the hand of God was following that prophetess. While that was happening, you are living your life anyhow. See, do you know something about the call of God? The call of God is dangerous. It will haunt you until it finds you. You do what you are doing, the call will remain. I tell you this. Yes. So, you will see somebody in a beer parlor now. That's a geo. I tell you. It takes discernment. Just, I'm not endorsing all these things. But while you are concluding, that geo, that's 30 churches you are seeing. And the person, the day God is ready to stamp his feet, you are on your way going from home, as drunk as you are. Fire falls from heaven. God will put a burden in the heart of one old intercessor woman who will pray for two years, not knowing the name of the person she's praying for. That's you there prophecies haunting you the first dream is as you take from stupor you see a crusade you get up and say no me me that i contributed in scattering the chairs of one crusade god says keep watching let me tell you one of the signs of what the spirit of god is doing in this season is bringing people who are this rejected stone you see they are rising from families I'm saying this prophetically. There are people, they've concluded about you. They've concluded everything about you. But God, God. 
Out of the ashes Am I dying today? I see the breaking Of a brand new day In which the name Of the Lord Alone is glorified I see the breaking of a brand new day. Your family may not look like anything, but out of the ashes of that dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day. In which the name of the Lord alone is The breaking of the brand. Listen, sister, if you don't like the brother, just go. Don't tear him down. Just go. Brother, if you don't like the sister, just go. Don't tear them down. Because God is in the business of turning people's lives around. You will see a brother that graduated 10 years, moving like a fugitive in one week. Three jobs just come. Have you not seen how history has changed people's lives? We must repent from concluding on people. Not when they are. That's why you see, let me tell you something. This is how I am. One hand is the hand of iron. Another hand is a hand of love. This is true fatherhood. When you are teaching, you teach preventive. You challenge people. But the other hand must be there. Are you listening to me? When you see me stand on stage and I'm preaching, you see the fire and fiery because I'm trying to create a platform for people to walk right. But then there is another hand, brothers and sisters. If all your hands are iron, you will not be a good preacher. On one hand, you must challenge people. But on another hand, you must be ready to wipe the tears of people. One of my prayer as a person is to remain a shoulder that any and all kinds of people can come. Whether you are a drunkard, people can criticize. That's why you never come and find anybody saying something here and say, this lady, we know her. So what? What is your business? It is the house of God, not your house. Leave them. Oh, the brother comes today. Don't, just leave him. Focus on what God is doing. One day, just like someone, you see God touching people here. You don't know how long God has been following them. If God has not given up on people, don't, be, don't give up on people. Let me tell you, society is full of people with all kinds of pain. Don't come and add to it. You see people laugh in church, forget all that laughter. There are people, some entered prostitution because of pain and frustration. Others entered it because of the frustration of their fathers. Some ladies are pursuing men for money, not because they are bad. It's the pressure of the pain. So you teach on one side. But with another hand, you are there to show love. Is God teaching us something? You have to learn. Some of us are pastors. We are very quick to conclude on people. We are very quick to turn and say, that lady, this brother, let me tell you, you know it. Ask the workers. There is nobody. Nobody. There are people who have gotten pregnant in this ministry out of wedlock. I stood by them. Suspect me. It's your cup of tea. I love God and I love them too much to allow your legalism stop it. We don't stand close to our wounded people in the body of Christ. We are the first to point to them. We are the first to say this guy will never rise. We are the first to say this pastor came down. We are the first to say this, this brother cannot. Keep quiet. If the God in heaven says there is hope for a tree, then you better support him and say there is hope for a tree. I'm speaking to certain people here. There are some ladies who believe they will never get married. You ask them why they say, Apostle, if you know what I've done with my life, I bring you a word of hope. This God you see is a mighty God. You are amazing. You are amazing. You're so amazing. You are amazing. Oh, oh, oh.
God is ministering to people. Motives. Number two, let me hurry up. Roles. There must be clarity of roles. Clarity of roles. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. A man has a role in a relationship. A man has a role in marriage. There is a divine order. A woman has a role. It says, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Whoever that man is, whether he's a pastor, whether he's an apostle, whether he's a prophet, whether he's a business CEO, there are roles. Most challenges in relationships, most challenges in marriage is because of one or the other party. When they refuse to perform the due diligence of their roles. I was counseling a pastor this morning before I came into Zaria. And we got into a very serious discussion. And he shared with me a few things that I felt were not supposed to be as far as his family was concerned and he seemed to justify it with a lot of spirituality he hoped i would be impressed at the end of it i told him carry a paper carry Byron." i told him i said go back to your wife and apologize to your wife he said he has a fasting program i said cancel it go to your wife apologize to your wife it so strong him but i said you honor me if you take my voice to be the voice of god in your life your heavens will remain closed there's no need praying for you go back swallow your pride humble yourself and say wife this is what i have done i have not played my role well and i told him the heavens will be open listen i told you in relationships there is no big manism you must be willing to be vulnerable are we hearing what i'm saying very important there are husbands who have not played their roles well there are wives who have not played their roles well. There are pastors and leaders who have not played their roles well. There are those in love relationships who have not played their roles well. There must be a definition. No system works when there is no clarity of roles. Nobody will come and sit down on the keyboard if it's not in the worship team. There are many people who can play keyboard. But there is an assigned role and even among all those who are playing keyboards they know those who are on duty is that true there is chaos and disorderliness every time there is vagueness of roles if the wife has money she buys food if the man has money he buys food there is no clarity when i'm not saying there cannot be assistance but let there be clarity who is the authorized personality for performing this if a man can cook and decides to go to the kitchen according to that marriage who is supposed to that kitchen is whose office if because of the nature of the job of the people the man says no I love you so my love constrains me are you getting what I'm saying now the payment of school fees if because the man has lost his job or has not gotten a job and the woman has an advantage and she says look my husband i will go out of the way to pay the school fees that is an assistance whose role scripturally provision is under whose office salvation is not under the office of the holy spirit it's under the office of the christ there is no other name given to man by which we must be saved you can't say holy spirit i believe in you and be born again he is part of the godhead but it is not his office when you pray you pray to the father jesus taught us answered prayers is in the office of the father even in heaven there are roles are we together now the 20 and 4 elders have their roles gabriel as an archangel has a role he doesn't show up and every time he's shown up it was a role in heaven where there is no devil in heaven there was an exact angel that brought messages our lives are disorderly because our businesses our churches our ministries 
Look at this. I, I always give this example. Watch this. If I throw this on the ground by mistake, whose role is it to come and help and pick and give it to me? If there is no, if there is no definition, Sam will try to run and come. Is that true? This lady will try to run and come and there will be chaos because all there was no definition of who plays which role is that true there has to be an authorized system if this mic goes off now everybody will run to the technical stand if there is no definition of who does what you see when there are roles reconciliation is easy because it's easy to identify who defaulted but when there are no roles, confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together now? You have to understand how these systems work. Thank you guys. Are we together? You must understand. It's very important. You're a businessman, train your staff. Nobody does just anything. No, sir. The wife cannot be the husband in the house doing everything. It doesn't matter whether she has more money than the man. It's not about money. It's a divine order. You don't like what I'm teaching. Please listen and find true freedom. Who is responsible for the disciplining and the correcting of the children? If the man carries a rag and mobs the house and sweeps the house and does everything. If the couples agree that let there be this because of our uniqueness, it is love. But not that people, do you know that most people come into relationships with our ideas? Of roles the lady has her idea of roles based on what you saw with her mother and her father or her elder sister the man and everybody keeps their own we're talking about expectations shortly and then there is chaos and anarchy she collects 500,000 as a seed and then the man stops giving her money for four months and she says you are joking in my world you are supposed to keep giving me money whether I collect 1 million because you are the man and the man says, in my world, whoever has money at the moment pays for the bills. Both of them are tongue-talking. They are spirit-filled. But that relationship cannot work. Are we together? There is no definition of roles. No relationship can thrive. No marriage can thrive. Even your work with God, you know the one that is for God. Give to Caesar what belongs there are some things that are a man's role sisters listen there is an anointing on everything a man does as prescribed by god any man that cannot cater for his family that means in god's system he has created a provision that if any man abides by that provision with time he should sustain the ability to provide for his family is that true there is a role of the woman. I don't want to go into all of the details. I've preached them in other messages. But we have gentlemen who are very irresponsible in many relationships and many families. A man can cross his leg with three or four children. And then they come with the report card. Daddy, uh, next week is school. Is it, am I working? Have you seen me go out to work? Go and meet your mother, Jerry. Is shameless it's supposed to be a taboo and then he meets the dear woman who covers his shame as proof that she submits to him and pays the school fees then the man is happy and goes to sit down with his colleagues playing draft and sitting in front of shops and all of this and they discuss themselves say, I control my wife oh, I don't let her do any nonsense every money plus high is my own How about women that can have one million naira and watch their husband struggle through hundred thousand? Say, me, I'm not a fool. I love him, but I'm not that foolish. Let him do it. If I do it, he will get used to it. Wise sayings, counsels of Ahitophel that spread from family to family, from mothers to children, from fathers to all kinds of things. And people destroy homes with all kinds of mindsets. Listen. A believer is not just one who has given his heart to Christ. A believer is one who has submitted to the word of God as final authority. Is God speaking to us? 
I know my role in this ministry. I have a role in Koinonia. The Lord has put me by grace and by privilege to head this ministry. I know my role and I play it well. I can do other things, but I choose to limit myself so that other people can find expression. The heads of department are here. They were constituted. If I trust them, then I step back and let them work. There is a system of supervision. I allow their creativity to find expression so that I can focus in the ministry of the word and prayer. There are many churches that will not grow because the man of God wants to do everything. You don't trust anybody. They finish collecting offering and you just stroll as if you are going to pray. And, and you just stroll in and say, why is that envelope on the ground? Put it back. What is your own job? Stay away. That's how many men are. They give their wives money and follow her to the market. Today I want to see. Okra can't be this price. And they watch. And we, we make a fool of ourselves. Understand your role. If the person fails, there is a third party in that relationship. And God is more than just. As carnal as we are, God gives you the anointing and steps back. I can misuse the anointing. He will call me to order, but he can trust me with the anointing. If God can trust me with the anointing, who are you not to trust another person? There must be clarity of roles. Even in a relationship, there must be clarity of roles. Define it. Who does what? You are in a relationship. Come darling. And the guy doesn't pray. He doesn't care. When it's time to pray, say, please, you will lead us. You know, you are the one who is a woman of God. That's a foolish man. Because according to the principle of priesthood, you can start carnal, but you shouldn't remain like that. You should so contend for growth that you should catch up fast. Don't say, you know, us, we, are, we just love God generally. You are the ones who are really into this God thing. Just pray for us. It's a thing a man should be ashamed of. I don't condemn you for being where you are, but you have to sit up. Are we together? The order of priesthood in the home is first man. God watched man fall when he came. He didn't go to Eve. He said, that's not my organogram. Adam, come, 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 come. Adam gave him access to talk to Eve. Then he went to Eve. Even God could not talk to Eve directly. He had to come to Adam. So when Satan starts talking to your wife in your home, something about your priesthood is missing. Why will a strange woman enter your house and start manipulating your wife? Where did you keep your discernment? Where were the dreams? No prophecy? No dream? No feeling anything? Come on now. Is God speaking to us? There must be clarity of roles. In this ministry, I know my role. I can't allow anybody's prayer life as much as I know to be greater than my prayer life in this ministry. I'm finished. What else am I doing? It's not just holding the mic. Geo and, and, and all these funny things. It's not just about water and all of this. There is a spiritual... When things go wrong in people's lives in the ministry, ask those who know me. I go back with pains and I say, God, what happened that you didn't show me? I remember one of our heads of department that died, I don't know how many years ago. Asked the protocol. Immediately they told me that thing. When I finished, I went on a retreat immediately. For three days, nobody saw me. I was asking God questions. What happened to my eyes? What happened to my ears? That is a great father. That you enter your home and see your children crying. I say, well, in Nigeria, I'm not worried. No, you are an irresponsible man. A good man will stand there in the presence of the children. And with tears coming, he will go and lock himself. And say, that's it. Which, who in my circle is financially free? I'm going to break my pride and go back. I can't watch this. I, it's amazing how children go to fathers. Daddy, I want school fees. I don't have. What should I do? That's irresponsible. That is sin. It's the same thing like drinking blood and eating flesh because you are destroying someone's destiny. 
Please don't get married when you are not ready to play your role. Being a man is not about having a masculine figure. It's not six pack. It's responsibility. It's responsibility. It's responsibility. Are we together? That's why we finish Koinonia. I stand every Friday for at least five hours. When I stand here around 7, 7.30, I don't leave this place sometimes till 12 or 1 in the night. Responsibility. I return by 4.30 from a trip. I've been away. I've not even eaten anything, truthfully speaking. I'm here standing by 5.30, we're off again to Lagos. It's responsibility. It's responsibility. I owe a responsibility to teach you the truth under God. You have honored me. It will be wicked. Immediately I arrived, I carried my laptop and my notebook first just to dust on the topics. Abba, provider, protector. Abba, provider. Don't bring any woman into your life that you don't have. It starts from relationship. This irresponsibility has traces. You can see it. As a man, don't keep quiet in a relationship every time there is a cost dimension. Even if you don't provide it, be sympathetic to it. Are we together? You want to pay school fees and your wife pays. Don't say, oh, well, thank you. No, my wife, thank you so much. You have helped me do this. I'm proud of you. I truly appreciate. Me? Tell my wife this? No way. I won't do anything. Then you continue. How many women leave their roles to house helps? Who win the hearts of their husband? And they keep binding and casting because they are out gossiping with people who talking about people. Um, um, what's her name? Please make sure you know my husband doesn't like too much. But just do this. If you are busy, it's justifiable. But most of them is out of laziness. And then the lady is preparing, and the man is watching a virtuous lady. She comes to serve him, and the devil starts suggesting, saying, "What was really your plan for a wife?" And at the end of it, when those women come for counseling, they won't tell you the whole story. They will cut the part that makes the man evil. Are we together? You must be willing to play your role. You must be. I can't come to a house and see children running up and down, mucus on their nose, their clothes with oil, and the wife is just crossing her legs. No, ma, you are failing in your role. Just because the man helped to dress the children is not his role. The design of a woman is a reflection of her role. Visitors cannot come and sit down and then the wife is just sitting and then the man goes to the fridge. He's trying to quickly prepare something. I said, my, my husband, that's how he is. No, that's not how he is. That's how you made him. God made him to occupy a position of honor. Is God speaking to us? I must pray for you it's a responsibility I must attend to you as much as possible it's a responsibility I must sow into your life not waiting for you to carry money and come and give me no sir brother is that what you are doing in your relationship is that what you are doing in your marriage sister is that what you are doing let's correct these things tonight if you are not yet in a relationship, thank God. If you are not yet married, thank God. Because now you are learning. You are learning. How many women are carrying the book? You see a child sick. Children sick. Three children sick. And you see the woman holding a hot air umbrella in the afternoon. Backing one and holding two with the umbrella. Just singing praise and worship. And going. And then the husband is somewhere. And you will find that man in a pepper soup joint somewhere you see that or donating money to one man of god it doesn't matter even if it's me it's a sin you take care of your family first don't carry any money and come and give any man of god and leave your family dying god does not act like that are we together and you are wondering where is this woman's husband child is coughing the other one is purging the baby is crying you see her tapping the baby standing in the hot sun and sometimes the husband can pass with a car and just wait back. later 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 
No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Your father advised you that that's what he did to your mother to respect him. But that's not the word of God. We've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Is God speaking to us? Don't expect to change if you are not taught. It is the entrance of the word that gives light. Otherwise, your default mindset, even if you hated it, is what you will see playing out. I watch the way brothers treat ladies. And I know they are on their way to being bad gentlemen. Now, I know that ladies have their issues here and there. But let me tell you, it is still not enough reason. Please, marriage is not by force. It's not the condition for heaven. If you must marry, be willing to play a role. It is true that the woman should respect you regardless of results. But results is like a lubricant to honor and submission. It is difficult for a woman to struggle to submit to a man who has proven himself to be worthy of honor. He said, let them that rule well be counted for double honor. Is God speaking to us? I'm going to stop here in that area. We are still going to talk on expectations very quickly. But listen, if you are in a relationship or you are looking at a lady prayerfully or you are looking at a guy prayerfully, it doesn't matter what category or you are married, go back home tonight and ask yourself, if you want to get into business partnerships, what is your role? Do you understand? I'm coming into this business as what? Please, if you are a CEO here or you have a business, you are leading a business, go back and find out all the people involved in that business. What is their role? Let there be clarity. If there is one boy running around your house, one girl running around your house, let them know, are they protégés or are they sons and daughters, maybe spiritually or by reason of commitment? Don't leave vagueness in your house. Who enters your room and who doesn't? Who should enter your bedroom and who shouldn't? Who should open your wardrobe and who shouldn't? If you don't define it, one day something will happen that will surprise you. You see homes. There are times a man and his wife can sit down. They are discussing very private issues. And the next thing, their mother or mother-in-law, somebody just bangs the door. And then, oh, you who are discussing, bar? sorry, uh, there's no, no. It's the fault of the man. Create a system of order. Anybody that comes under my roof should know their boundaries and their limitations. Are we together? Yes. Nobody should come to your house with your wife there and just enter your kitchen and start cooking. No, sir. If your wife authorizes her or on grounds of friendship, that's fine. People cannot veto into your life like that. A man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. Put walls. There are walls in heaven. There's no enemy there. Yet there are gates to regulate and bring order. Twelve gates. Hallelujah. I live a peaceful life as a man of God because there is clarity. I don't have to come here in the daytime to check. Have they put the chairs? No. The people have been trained to keep their roles. Here and there, people forget their roles or don't meet up to expectations. Then you can lovingly call people to order. You don't blame everybody for one person's mistake. When there is clarity of roles, if there is no food in the house, you know who to blame. Transfer of aggression is proof of lack of wisdom. There has to be somebody. If it is systemic, you can pinpoint who should do this. You don't blame your wife for something children should do. Children are running around there and you finish eating and your wife does not carry the plate and you have a young lady, 13 years, she catwalks and pass you there. You call her back and say, no, pick that plate. You are going to become someone's wife. Yeah, Daddy, I don't like this. This is the kind of thing. I, that's how I watch in that film. Tell her, keep quiet. Keep quiet. Fast. This is my house. I love you. I've been responsible. I don't mean to abuse you. But it is not under my watch. If I train you and you get to the age of discretion and you mismanage your life, I can stand before God and men and say, that is my daughter. I train her. Her life is not a reflection of my convictions. You remain my daughter, but you, you reap the consequence of your actions. But not when you are under your watch. Don't let anything under your watch in business and in life go out without definition. 
expectations. Number three. Let's talk about this and we pray. Is God helping us tonight? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 3 and verse 3 to 5. Quickly. Every relationship has expectations. Marriage, business, career, church, mentor, mentee, father, son, daughter, husband, wife, whatever kind. Every relationship has expectations. Acts chapter 3, please. The Bible speaking about the man at gate beautiful he kept seeing peter and john the bible says that he saw them every time and then one time when he saw them they looked like they were rich they created an impression that cultivated expectation and then the bible says who see him peter and john were they the only two that went to the temple no there was something he had been observing in them. That was his place of stay. And the Bible says he asked them for arms. Verse 4. And Peter fastening his eyes implicated himself by saying, look on us. If he kept quiet, that man would say, talk, you are passing. The rest, he kept begging and the rest just did like this. But Peter stopped. Are we together now? Yes. Many people don't want children, but you stopped. You said, I want. You are implicating yourself. Many people don't want marriage. You stopped. You looked at a lady and said, I want to spend my life with you. Every time you make a proposal and a commitment, you are creating expectation. It says, look on us. Verse 5, the last verse now. It says, and he gave heed to them, expecting to do what? Please talk to me. Expecting to your wife expecting something from you. Your husband expecting from you. God expecting from you. You expecting from God. Everything relational has expectations. Frustration in relationships are products of disappointed expectations. Now, many people are not vocal enough about their expectations. For most couples, it is hidden. They are not vocal to state it out, which in my opinion is very dangerous. There must be clarity of not only motives, roles, but expectations. Expectations of behavior. Hello, look up please. Expectations of contribution. If you get a job with a bank, they tell you what to expect and then they tell you what they are expecting from you. Is that true? Yes. You can see the way the worship team is dressed. Wonderful, lovely people. By subscribing to this department, there are expectations. You have expectations, but then there are also expectations. There are demands. And it must be clear. Imagine if they didn't plan what to wear. There are times that I believe you can freestyle. Everybody just wears whatever. At that time, you don't blame anybody for wearing what. We can't all agree to wear suit. And then you just come in with your jeans and say, look, there's liberty in the house of God. No. There's expectations. There are, there are times in the bank where they say today we are wearing the vests. If you are in that bank and you are walking, you, it's not whether you like it or not. It's the sacrifice for relationships. Please, I want you to note this. All relationships should have clearly defined expectations. Especially love relationships. Expectations of behavior and expectations of contribution. What do I expect you to bring to the table as my wife? What do I expect you to bring to the table as my husband? I just entered a relationship with you. Congratulations. What do I expect you to bring? What is the expectation of behavior from me to you? What is expectation of behavior from you to me? Listen, don't say it does not matter. There is expectation of behavior. When a woman gets married, her husband expects certain behaviors. The man too should, there, there is a way you must behave. There is a way you talk. There is a way you reason. When God makes you a leader and anoints you, there is expectation. Expectation. When trouble happens, 
in let's say a company you see maybe a, a staff and a customer are fighting they are all fighting when a manager or a director comes out he doesn't act like the person who just got a job don't insult me or just because we live on the same street i will remove this suit and beat the living daylight out of you and while he's talking a director comes out his attention is called he has been trained to create an expected behavior that reflects the values of the bank and he comes and says, okay calm down what's wrong and he says, your staff he, every time i talk to him he counts money and yes you people are all cheats in this bank he says all right we apologize and he's paining the staff the staff is saying this guy he says no it's all right just go up and wait for me he doesn't even rebuke him and then he tells the man i'm sorry for doing this we're giving you two thousand naira extra and god said tell that your foolish man that i'm a valued staff and walks out you will think the director was cheap for doing that it's called expected behavior he now goes out and shuts the door and then blasts the hell out of his staff and then when he finishes they come out as if they were drinking tea together because there is expected behavior does your home have an expected behavior that's why men don't know who to beat in public or secret no expectation they just beat the wife quarrel the wife there are things your wife does not expect from you there are things she expects from you if you do not fulfill the expectations the parties will be frustrated are we together a woman cannot marry and still want her single life again something you, you must have given up something a man cannot marry and still want his single life again you are you used to stay out late 10 30 in the night for no reason now you are married and you say please that's how my life is there is expectation of behavior hallelujah you won't come and see me stand here i'm not saying it's bad you won't come and see me stand here flying chains and wearing all kinds of rings in my hand they may not be wrong in themselves but leadership demands expectation of behavior are we together i can't come and stand here with clothes not iron as simple as that if i were not in my position it would not matter but the position demands an expectation is god speaking to us every business every career and every love relationship must have a system of providing clarity of expectation now let me say something very quickly look up please i wrote something down here never try this is particularly for love relationships never try to change a spouse's personality there is a difference between personality and mindsets the only thing that can change is mindset personalities do not change easily most marriages and relationships are, are a circle of frustration because the man brings any lady and wants to force and mold that lady to reflect his idea and there are certain things that are ideological in nature but there are certain things that are personalities you will be blessed listen carefully a personality write this down the word personality means the psychological classification of different types of individuals please learn this personality talks of the psychological classification of different kinds of people personality talks about an individual's make up an individual's inherent identity an individual's make up an individual's inherent identity not mindset personality is not mindset an example of personality types now we're not doing all the standard the psychometry and all of this but i just want to give you an idea look up please because this is an area of great healing for many of us listen we have people who are quiet and reserved it's a personality we have people who are logical and inquisitive it's a personality we have people who are vocal and idealistic they are very outspoken we have people who are adaptable and agreeable 
they can marry anybody it doesn't matter if they marry pastors they can be a pastor's wife they marry a farmer they can be a farmer's wife they can adjust and adopt there are men like that you make them ceos they will do well you make them you tell them to learn guitar they can they are adaptable and agreeable there are people who that's see let me tell you this most relationship experts most of them were fortunate to come into lives with people whose personalities resonate and then they take for granted the ease with which their marriage is working and keep writing all kinds of books and making it look like if you are not getting that ease something is wrong it's a lie I don't have experience to speak over marriage but I can tell you from the word of God and from people whose lives have been models that any marriage is hard work is that true so a way with there are people who are fortunate they were able to resonate with individuals whose personalities are in tandem so whether or not with minimal effort there is compatibility so they they carry their relationship and their marriage as a template and write books about it and mentor people marriage is like the signs on the palm of someone's hand you can only be guided but you are the one who walks your marriage out with fear and trembling is god speaking to us There are people who are people-oriented and fun-loving. You will mistake them for being less as fair, but they are not. Even when they say someone has died, they can say, eh, eh, and in two minutes they are laughing at something else. And you are saying, I, I expect you to be crying. You say, well, I used to have a friend like that. Very interesting friend. Even when he was sick, he said he had malaria and he was still laughing on a call. I said, this, this guy, will you ever frown? now you will see those people and be deceived that they are always joyful no don't let their personality betray you you will be with them for 10 years laughing every day and they'll tell you i've never been happy in this marriage from day one you say i can't believe this you look at the portrait in the parlor that's you laughing he said no it's my personality i have never really been happy there are people who are strong-willed and authoritative men and women alike strong willed you have to give them a thousand reasons to bend to the slightest adjustment ah may that be, not be your wife oh may that not be your wife <laughs> strong willed and authoritative there are people who are argumentative and controversial you ask them what is one plus one I say it depends on the base base what <laughs> a simple answer that you can give they, they like it they like being controversial are we together yes you ask a very simple question they escalate little things i saw the way you smiled at that guy and you know in psychology there's something called eye contact they, they create stories out of nothing i'm sorry i did this to you why did you leave it till now? I mean, they, 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 they have, no, no, there has to be a logic in this. I mean, you had a chance to say it in the morning, in the afternoon. You are saying it by night. It's a sign of argumentative. Now, they may not be bad. It's a personality. Most people are not guided. It's when they get married, they find out through experience that this is who and what I've married. Are we together what is a mindset a mindset is a viewpoint a perspective an established set of attitude it's usually a product of orientation I wrote here that is created by information the difference between a personality and a mindset is that a personality is inherent it doesn't mean it cannot be adjusted it can be adjusted by the power of the Holy Spirit but it is inherent a mindset is a philosophy you got as a result of an orientation that an information gave you now let me tell you this no matter how um please come come two of you let's assume that doctor is very quiet are we together let's assume that he's a very quiet person let's assume that david dam is very very um very vocal now two of them are filled with the holy spirit and all of that but the truth of the matter is that the wife comes and says me i like quiet men 
then you came to this guy you are going to frustrate him by saying don't talk the personality will keep betraying you again and again okay keep quiet and he keeps quiet after five minutes sorry that, that thing i want to keep quiet now and then at the end he said you are frustrating me this is what happens in many marriages the couples are on a mission to change supposedly you can't change any man you can only change mindsets and trust the holy spirit create a system of understanding to manage personalities otherwise don't go there fortunate for you if you can discern before but if you didn't then you must create a system of accommodation there are women who are mouthy it's not it's not um it can be used wrongly but it doesn't mean they are bad they are just very vocal they say a woman talks four thousand words in a day while a man talks one thousand five so if a noisy woman talks 500 in a day that balance is coming one day prepare for it because it should be 4,000 <laughs> it's like a check that will soon cash are we together you already know that your wife for instance is not somebody who is very quiet and you have a business meeting find a diplomatic way of making her excuse the meeting because sharp personality is going to disrupt the meeting and you will hate your wife the bible says dwell with them according to knowledge same thing in relationships there are men who like fighting for rights a bike man throws you and then the person you are going out to just comes and say are you joking i have my friend who is a lawyer let's carry this i said no 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 let it be no way me Abba, i can't i can't except i'm not the one in this relationship you think it's a joke Three days later, you see one lawyer guy with a paper looking for a bike man. Say, you threw my woman. You are somebody who is generally agreeable. I don't like trouble. So don't tell the man the story of the bike man. Are you seeing that now? Since you forgive, let it be. There are all these advocates, fighters of justice. That's a Mandela kind of personality. If, listen, listen, learn this, we are going to pray. Are we together when you discern the personality then you create a system around it you can change mindsets not personalities don't go there if the personality by default does not resonate with what you can take unfortunately most people are not mentored to this degree so they make a lot of costly mistakes you're a quiet person and then a woman is noisy and you see her and say is it that you you are not hearing what apostle is saying and she says i'm sorry sir and while you are trying to talk she says sorry let me is, is this what i'm saying <laughs> my brother it is not a cause from anybody's father's house this is personality learn learn don't get angry at, and then let me tell you what the devil will do the devil will position a house help or someone that is quiet just like you want and he said can't look at look at this I've been talking to this lady for 10 minutes she's been silent this is exactly what I'm talking about and you make the wife hate the house help and say you are living next month in this house whereas that's the only source of helping her education the man did not understand and the man has dishonored his wife before the house help you are comparing I'm not saying the house help is bad but you are the wife but you are now comparing the wife with the house help the small girl will go back and say wow so this is how this man esteems me i can't believe it the next time she's passing she will make up you will be shocked yes sir yes sir she will make up not just because of going out like that she's ah, i used to think this is just i mean i can't believe that this man has this level of discernment over me and trouble comes to your home don't try to change anybody no man can change anybody's personality the more the word of God begins to act on you and cultivate the fruit of the spirit you see that the fruit of the spirit will begin to adjust your personality but it will not take everything away a talkative will be a talkative a quiet person will be a quiet person there are many quiet people we think it's the Holy Ghost that made them so no it's their personality so they make you feel guilty for talking so much they make you look like if you are really a spiritual person you should be quiet it's a lie it's a lie it's a big lie there are others who are vocal and mouthy and jumping around maybe preach yourself you can jump around and make it look like if you are not agile like that you, mm -mm, mm -mm. that's not the holy spirit 
let's separate between the one our personality brought in and the one that came just because you are anointed elijah was a temperous person short tempered he would have easily walked on it but he didn't choose to walk on it god still used him so while you are mentoring you are looking at his life for mentorship make sure you take away the personality so that you don't take the personality as part of what the holy spirit produces in men there are people who are not honest i can be angry with david Dam now and insult him and say it's the zeal of the lord no sir it's not the zeal of the lord i have a personality problem i must be unashamed to make this know that this is not mm -mm, this is not the holy spirit it is true that the holy spirit convicted me but this uh -uh, that insult part was not the holy spirit Are we together you can change mindsets but you almost may not be able to change personalities no don't try to change your spouse's personality to reflect yours create a system of understanding create a system of understanding I've taught again and many of us know from psychology that women respond to life emotionally and men respond to life logically we know that you cannot make a woman become another man because of this let me tell you uh, you've heard me share it i can miss david dam for one year and the day we see this is what happens david hi and we're like ah i missed you i so missed you and it's over that's it all right uh, we'll see this is one year missing that's a man for you i just hugged him and remember that there's something i need to go and do quickly a lady will leave her friend in the morning and just because the friend didn't call by two by four she said Habba, i notice you are getting heartless these days just because of six hours gap not to talk of a man that now traveled for three days and came back and you see her being childish and playing all around you and you say what, what did i marry I'm a, I'm a serious man everybody knows i'm visionary what is this jumping up and down for that's a lady for you i tell you the ladies are so blessed that i understand this and i'm letting you know Yes, they are. Are we together? Now, listen. The lady can come and meet the brother. We're rounding up. Sir, the landlord came home. And then the man keeps quiet. You didn't hear what I said? <laughs> then the man keeps quiet. Because you see, when men are under pressure, silence is the way they speak. Silence does not mean they are ignoring you. Silence means they are processing if you don't understand this about men you will destroy yourself i say what is all this thing with this man what is all this thing you know blah 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 when women are under pressure they can talk you've heard me say it again and again the woman will talk about the issue of oil on a chair that it is not oil anything she has been finding a way of engaging her husband and the guy has been she's angry about plenty things and it so happened that he now poured palm oil on a chair I'm the one who walks in this house. I walk every day. Blah, 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 blah. And the man says, all for oil? Abasa. You are smart enough to know that this is not oil. The message is very clear. I am emotionally bankrupt. Find a way of fulfilling it. Fulfill that emotion and see how oil matter fades like a leaf. Say, how about the oil today? Which oil? Abba. Which oil? Are we together so we have a visionary man and a wonderful jovial playful woman in the same house and they just can't connect the man is sitting bible study or business meeting there's a contract coming 100 million honey do you know what is happening 100 million is coming i said see I, i'm telling you if you see the cold drink i'm making for you and i say i'm talking to you about something we will eat and you are mm -mm. and do you know what the woman says she looks at him and says i've been married to you for 10 years you have never appreciated me i says me i've never appreciated you what of the bad days what of dubai what she's trying to say is this is what i feel at this moment and so i just have a way of saying it and uh, i thought if i say from the beginning it will bring the kind of impact that will force a response period but the man will take it literally with his philosophical first class brain and now go and say my wife call his friend i said my friend he said you too that's exactly what is happening my own home. <laughs> oh, 
are going to pray. There are times ladies talk to you. The goal is not to answer. They are not talking to you. They are relieving themselves. Be wise and listen. Doesn't matter what they say. They will ramble from pillar to post. Just, just be agreeable if you want peace to reign. Be agreeable. At the end of it, when they start crying, you can come in. Because you know that that's it. They've got you to the breaking point. Okay, come in. But you stop her in the middle of that conversation. My brother, you will hear it. Prophetess, preacher, you will. Because that's, it's like a radar looking for who to end. Just stand behind quietly. It's not weakness. It's wisdom. Through wisdom is a house built. 24 verse 3 of, of Proverbs. Through wisdom. Amplified says a home, a house, whatever it is, is built. And then, let me round up. You talk to the man about the rent and he keeps quiet. And he said, I've noticed every time I talk to my husband, he just ignores me. What is this? I'm talking to him because I'm under pressure. You spoke to him on Sunday. On Wednesday, you just see him sit down and say, um, the house issue you spoke about. I'm not interested in anything. You didn't speak that time. No, that's how men talk. While he's sitting down, he has planned three or four people that he can call. He has made some calls without you knowing. You want to hear him making the call. The pride of a man does not allow that. He wants to show you he's responsible. Say, call in my presence. Let me know you are doing something. No, a man doesn't act like that. He will sit down. Because you are there, he will use an email instead. He will not use a call. So you will think he's not doing anything. Hey, Jimmy, please help me. Can I get 10 naira from you? Hey, Jimmy replies, yes, thank you. The alert has entered the account, you didn't even know. Just because he's sitting down quietly. Husband, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been keeping quiet. I'm not like, just because I'm not like other women. No, 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 and the man just keeps quiet. And one day, you go to test his blood pressure. And you see that it's everything over everything caused by you. And you come back and one day the man just looks at you. And in one word, he says, I'm going to divorce you. I can't take it. And he says, what have I done? And the man will say, I've been in this pain for 16 years. You don't understand me. But this is how he will say it. You don't respect me. You don't understand how we think. This is how men are. When they met Jesus, we caught a woman in adultery. Jesus just kept quiet. That's a man for you. Are you not going to talk? When he was before Pontius Pilate, in pain. When men are in pain, they keep quiet. When women are in pain, they talk till they cry. Men are not like that. Even when they cry, it's just the tear that speaks. My wife, I am in pain. Being a man is not one day. So. And the woman is talking. And then she said, oh, since you will not do anything, I will go and call this. And he said, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, you yeah, talk now. Just go. Go and sleep. Then in the middle of the night, the man wakes up and goes to sit down outside. Did I offend you? No, you didn't offend him. He's processing. Learn how men think. He will sit down under a tree and say, Lord Jesus, you gave me a wife and children. Shame has come upon me like a shadow. Will you not help me? I must come and sit with you. The Bible says, what God has joined. Leave the man. He's talking to God. He's talking to God. What is all what God has joined again? He's talking to God. Do, do, do. Okay, do. Okay, do. Do, do. Okay, do. Okay, do.
I want you to hold the hand of someone by your left and right, wherever you are. Let me tell you this. I know you laughed over everything that I was teaching. But there might be people following online who are saying, Apostle, you just read my marriage. You just read my relationship like a script. Are you sure somebody did not tell you about me? This pain society is full of pain ratio of divorce one is to two there's got to be something wrong the inability to understand the systems of god by the spirit of wisdom is what has brought this pain believers cannot enter decent relationships that they can be proud of that will lead in marriage Christian marriages now break and some don't divorce but the truth is they are divorced the truth is they are divorced intimacy zero communication zero partnership zero support of purpose zero that's why people get married and run back to their ex this ex that because they compare we celebrated valentine there are people here who just entered relationships others have been in it for a while others are married others are planning to get married others are veterans in this it doesn't matter where you are holding someone's hand because christian relationships are in trouble this thing there is a siege from darkness to attack marriages there is a siege from darkness to attack relationships there are many wonderful ladies that God wants them to settle there are many wonderful brothers but there is an understanding from the pit of hell and this discussion is an attempt by the spirit how many people have been stigmatized in the house of God because of their weaknesses and limitations how many women right now live unfulfilled lives in marriages listen by the privilege of the grace God has given me I counsel people I counsel people old enough to be my parents I counsel couples I counsel people when they are getting married and sometimes I have to rest my head and say my God the person you are holding his hands right now may be in pains that you may never imagine we come from families I know that we all dress well tonight but in one minute I'd like you to whisper a genuine prayer over the person you are holding and say Lord let the grace let there be healing let there be healing healing there are women who if they have their way they will say I made a mistake in marriage Lord healing there are men who are looking to say if only someone advised me I would not marry this woman I can't believe I'm going to live with her for the next 40 years there are relationships right now a man entering five relationships thinking every lady is bad God is showing you that the problem might be you or a lady having a problem with every guy there are good relationships about to miss themselves because they do not understand the systems of God God has revealed a sister to you but just because you do not understand this you are about to lose a godly lady you are about to lose a godly brother because you've not been taught the way systems work please pray pray this is a serious business you grew up seeing your father humiliate your mother just because she was patient for 30 years 40 years does not mean that's how it should be you grew up seeing your mother pay the bills that's not the way it should be Pray. Make your ma, 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 make your ma. Keep praying. Me mulki, me eco. Babu, Babu, Wani Kamar the Hallelujah. 
prayer point number two i'd like you to pray for your family if you are married pray please let me encourage except your wife is sitting far if you are married hold the hands and pray for your family the devil is out to destroy he's tarnishing the image of the church through their family lives there are men that are irresponsible we must square up there are women that are not respecting men we have been trained to be celebrated all over and we bring our husband as a fan we think he's part of the fans that admire our beauty you enter a relationship and still want the man to join a queue among the men liking you is a joke when the man talks he said don't treat me like this there are 10 other guys who love me who taught you that when you sign up for a relationship is a declaration of vulnerability you are ready to soil your hands to make it work beautiful girl handsome guy i'm a celebrity ladies like me all that is nonsense and um, there are 10 guys calling me every day that is nonsense a relationship is a call for surrender of everything some of our fathers right now are almost giving our mothers heart attack as i'm talking some of you know it's true if your mothers were to hear me preach they would say sir this is what i wanted to tell my daughter before she goes to marriage the fact that many marriages are not divorced does not mean they are enjoying the high rate of unfaithfulness can be traceable to the frustrations that people face please make contact with someone and let's cry for our families cry there is hope for a tree cry for your relationship lord forgive me where i've missed it as a result of ignorance i always thought the problem was the brother i thought the problem was my husband i didn't know love is a choice i didn't know it's a declaration of value i have devalued my husband before men i have devalued the gentleman you have brought to my life i've devalued this lady i've made everybody disrespect my wife disrespect this lady pray i've allowed my wife to foot the bill and play my role i've allowed my husband to be playing the role of a wife and i've thought that is a sign that i'm an expensive lady not knowing that i'm destroying my home i have gossiped about everyone and everything about my home about my husband i've stripped the dignity in my relationship i ask for mercy lift your voice and pray lord help my father lord help my mother let him understand this let my father be able to enjoy a good wife let my mother be able to enjoy a good husband koinonia pray our time is gone but let's pray Mandela Capros Cadaba La Curia Tabas Secate Parroca to Sabrina Maladaba La Catos. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Two more prayer points very quickly. I want everyone to pray. Lord, grace to understand and play my role unashamedly in my relationship. Lift your voice and pray. Whether you are in a relationship or not, that's not the issue. Grace to be a provider indeed. Grace. To protect the fragile personality of the dear woman you have brought to my life pray grace to honor my man grace grace to honor the father of my children not once not twice grace to be vocal about honor pray i receive grace i will never allow my wife to go out looking for money while i'm sitting down there doing nothing i will never never allow my wife to replace me as provider if she's blessed and she contributes glory be to god i will never allow my husband be the one doing what i can do I break my pride I humble myself pray I break my pride I keep my ego aside hallelujah hallelujah you are in a relationship here and you have 
taking for granted any man's daughter you owe an apology you are in a relationship here and you've made nonsense of the man god has brought to your life because of all these funny men that come around like sheep they don't know you they've not lived with you so their verdict based on the flashy you they see is that you are award-winning but the person who knows you has ate with you has cried with you the same way the guys the lady doesn't know you she's not stayed with you in the room so it's easy for her to see the guy who is a millionaire she's not seen you under pressure but the person that has seen everything about you and yet loves you you can kick her like a piece of rag let's be careful grace the last prayer point i want us to challenge the power some of us come from families let's be honest tonight some of us come from families where there are strong altars we are not bad but the altars in our families have wrecked every marriage you know of including a pastor we are going to pray let's take one minute and wait war in the spirit don't keep quiet lift your voice and pray you have noticed that any man that comes into your life everything about him is destroyed it's not supposed to be very challenging discussions tonight lord let this word not just come and be received without bringing transformation lord i know that with this word tonight you have answered many questions you have brought direction for others you have given a green light for others you have given a red light for others you have given a basis for discussion for others you have given prayer points lord i pray that you help us all in the name of jesus we want to produce award-winning relationships in koinonia we want to produce award-winning homes lord i pray for my fellow brothers help them to be established i pray for our dear sisters in the name of jesus may they become virtuous women whose price is above rubies every cultural barrier we've held onto that is responsible for destroying our relationships and our personhood i challenge it in the name of jesus i declare freedom for you i declare liberty any relationship that does not reflect this that we have taught i supply grace for you to get out of it in the name of jesus and any relationship that is reflective of this that i've spoken about no matter what challenges are there i supply grace for you to stay and finish through in the name of jesus christ i bless every home represented for all those following online several parts of this nation and around the world i bless you and i bless your home in the name of jesus two things very quickly tonight i want us to make an altar call but we're going to make two altar calls quickly the first altar call is for those who are coming to hand their lives over to jesus the second altar call please keep standing you will sit down shortly i know you've been standing the second altar call is for those who are rededicating their lives listen and those who are standing in to say lord i'm standing not everybody please i'm standing in on behalf of my family there are marriages have not worked at all in my family but i want to be a pioneer i want to bring forth something that reflects you those three categories of people wherever you are make your way to the front quickly please quickly quickly we have one minute clap for them please everyone god bless you quickly god bless you nothing to be ashamed about god bless you quickly everyone keep clapping god bless you keep coming don't be ashamed some of you are standing on behalf of your family you are getting born again come come join them quickly but there are people who are saying apostle i've not seen a single marriage in my lineage that has worked ends up in divorce ends up in all kinds of devilish things lord have mercy make your way to the front you are not coming out as a sign of weakness some of you are not even representing yourself let me tell you the truth if you are not prayed for you will see the same result reproduced lord i don't know why every man that comes into my life i destroy them 
I don't know why every woman that comes into my life, I destroy them. Same thing with my elder brother. Same thing with my elder sister. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs, wonders. Now, all those who are coming out for salvation prayer, you pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe in you that you are the son of God. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. From today, I hand my life over to you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm born again. Eternal life is in my spirit. In Jesus' name. Now, all of you who are standing to pray for families, I'm going to lead you through a simple prayer, just one minute, and you'll be surprised what happens to you. Please say after me passionately, those of you standing and trusting God to end certain things. There has to be somebody to end it. Say in Jesus' name. Say it convincingly in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare that I have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every covenant of witchcraft that is destroying homes and relationships in my family I stand here tonight and I make a new covenant on behalf of myself and my loved ones and I declare that in the name of Jesus marriages begin to work I declare that marriages begin to work in the name of Jesus say I declare that marriages begin to work Satan powers holding my family maritally I declare let me go now let my marriage go now let my relationship go now now i decree and declare to every power and every force dying anyone's family the bible says declare ye that ye might be justified i command right now in the name of jesus every force that is responsible for delayed marriages divorce childlessness barrenness women serving men men serving younger ones serving elder ones i cost that power now i cost that spirit now a family where all the men die and leave the women to struggle a family where the women die a family where children feed their parents a family where poverty is the order of the day i cost it in the name of jesus Listen, I decree and declare over your life. I don't care how long it is. I stand tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. And I declare in the name of Jesus. I stand under the grace that God has given me. That if there is any man here, any woman, any family. That the devil has tied your marital destiny. I release you now. Go free. I release you now. Go free. That spirit that makes the man for you not to see you they pass you every day but they cannot see you i cause that spirit right now in jesus name the spirit that kills children in every marriage you see old people in the family all the young people get killed i arrest that spirit now in jesus name the spirit that makes every young man to be irresponsible only the women become responsible the young men are alive but they never do anything useful graduates but they live from hand to mouth i curse that spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ please just be patient with me everyone lift your hands everyone lift your hands we're rounding up everyone lift your hands the spirit of anger Jekotos katapaya anyone here under the sound of my voice suffering the spirit of anger it has destroyed your relationship 
it has destroyed everything about your life by the fire of the Holy Ghost I arrest that spirit right now I arrest that spirit come out of them now come out of them temper anger I come against it help them please for brothers for sisters inside outside overflow one two three and online I command that spirit be gone now the spirit of impatience I curse you impatience with the man impatience with the woman I command you to give way now the spirit of ingratitude that makes you never to say thank you you always feel you more should be done for you I command that spirit to die from your life now this is what brings peace in marriage if there is anybody alive from any village that has vowed that nobody will rise maritally I stand here in the name of Jesus I command the earth to open over that person I command the earth to open any grandmother any grandfather any necromancer any shrine holder any priesthood that is tying anyone's marriage I curse it in Jesus name Every lady and every guy that desires marriage this year in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God wherever your husband is or wherever your wife is I stand by this apostolic and prophetic unction I command that connection in the spirit I command that connection in the spirit you may not see wind you may not see rain but I command that connection now And anyone who is ready to settle down but finance is the limitation I cry to my God to arise and surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus now please all those who gave their lives to Christ there may not be very many of you but all those who said the prayer of salvation please I like you them only I like you to go this way to my right salvation prayers and then all those who came for the general prayers you can return back to your seat rejoicing very quickly give jesus a hand clap hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you